good morning everyone at the onset i like to thank bansi for inviting me to this year diacon we are meeting after almost 3 year post covid first diacon meeting and the topic which has been allotted to me is an interesting topic topic which has been allotted to me is a very interesting topic use of testosterone in diabetic therapy what a practitioner should know now recently we have seen large number of our colleagues are asking for testosterone test in patients of diabetes and even they are put on therapy whether we should do it in all patients do it in some patients or we should not do it at all we are going to address some of these issues and i am going to show you two cases and then based on those two cases will built upon the lecture and these cases will help you in routine clinical practice a 64 year old man presented with poor libido and decreased sexual function and energy patient is a known case of type 2 diabetes from 6 year hba1c 8.9 well controlled diabetic asymptomatic stable ischemic heart disease current medication metformin su ace inhibitor statin low dose aspirin so a routine common garden case seen by all of us bmi 31 so is obese normal body hairs test is bilaterally 20 ml normal no gynecomastia now because of these symptoms practitioners asked for doing a testosterone level which was found to be 7.4 nanomoles or another unit which is reported by lab again we have to look for units in which the report is given to us 215 nanograms per deciliter this is a more common unit usually given by labs lh fsh are in normal limit thyroid prolactin normal limit and an mri has not been performed wisely now three important questions to you if you want to answer or otherwise else i will answer at the end of the lecture does this patient has hypogonadism his testosterone level i have written normal range is also given does we need to perform an mri in such patients and how to manage such type of patients next case now we are living in an era large number of patients are undergoing transplants so 58 year old man underwent transplant and subsequently he also developed diabetes and is on insulin therapy current medication he is on immunosuppressive mycophenotyl mofetil tacrolimus insulin ace inhibitor and vitamin d so they are real world cases and he has some issues regarding poor sexual function although is normal shaving when you take history which often we forget there is a history of childhood mumps or kitis but he has a normal puberty bmi again is 32 his examination shows a testosterone of 3.0 nanomole or 87 nanogram lh is 1 fsh is 1.2 again how will you assess this case how will you manage so these are some real world cases which i thought we should share and then we will discuss now why this topic has been kept i do not know why bansi has kept but, but to me what is significance of clinical problem if you see many aging and obese men actually presents with signs and symptoms of androgen deficiency which are actually also caused by aging per se so there is a confusion actually whether it is because of testosterone deficiency or as a part of normal aging process also we have to understand after 40 years of age with each year there is a decline in testosterone in a healthy man by 1.2% and shbg which is sex hormone binding globulin i will tell you increases by 1.2% so when you measure total testosterone it is found to be normal but bioavailable testosterone which is actually important for functions is decreasing every year after 40 years of age therefore clinicians are often faced with question with a question when they see a report whether to treat or whether not to treat and guidelines try to answer this question to some extent now there is a very important term in adult men late onset hypogonadism we are not talking of classical hypogonadotropic hypogonadism or hypergonadotropic hypogonadism which has an onset quite early we are here talking of a middle aged men where is a new term late onset hypogonadism how to define three sexual symptoms poor morning erections decreased sexual interest and erectile dysfunction 
if a man fulfill these three criteria and we order testosterone if testosterone level is less than 8 nanomole or 230 then he is considered to have late onset hypogonadism what are the signs and symptoms of hypogonadism we will not discuss in detail but there are some signs which are more specific to hypogonadism and these are usually seen in those who are suffering either as I have told you hypogonadotropic or hypergonadotropic or have undergone some surgery or pituitary radiation because of which they might develop this. What is more common, what of the patients were having less common signs and symptoms which are seen either because of aging or because of testosterone deficiency. So there is a huge overlap with less common signs and symptoms. So how to diagnose? We always say to our students a proper history and physical examination. Do not treat investigations, treat patients. Patient will come to you because nowadays there is a corporate health checkup. They will come you a bundle of investigation which also include testosterone. So please do not treat investigation, take history, examination and then decide whether to treat or not to treat. Unexplained anemia in a male, very good indicator whether patient is suffering because testosterone has positive effect on hematopoiesis. In a male, unexplained decrease in bone density. There is no menopause like thing in males. So a 50 year old male coming to you with decreased bone density, one should suspect whether this individual is having hypogonadism or not. We have to measure testosterone level, but then always remember testosterone has a circadian rhythm. It is best to be measured between 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Do not measure at any point of the day. Also, do not measure if patient is suffering from any acute medical illness or febrile illness. It is very common. After acute febrile illness, testosterone levels are transiently decreased for six weeks to three months. Do not measure. You may be wrongly treated because body has a natural instinct for survival and sex hormones takes a back seat. So whenever somebody falls sick, testosterone levels comes down to some extent. So patient should not be suffering from an acute medical illness, should be done in the morning, should be done in a pooled sample, two samples taken together, pooled together and then testosterone should be measured. Also never measure testosterone alone major testosterone along with LH and FSH to make a wise decision. So these are some of the catches. Now coming to SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. This is a major, major albumin which globulin which is binding testosterone in the plasma. Only 4 to 6 percent of the testosterone is free. Now there are medical conditions which either increases SHP level or decreases SHP level and I have highlighted them here obesity, diabetes, hypothyroidism, all of them are associated with decrease in SHBG level. So if you are measuring total testosterone, it may be falsely low. Bioavailable testosterone might be normal. There are conditions which increases SHB level like aging. Now I have told you what happens after 40 years of age, hyperthyroidism, use of drugs, so if with these conditions, there is increase in SHB level. So whenever there is a doubt, either measure free testosterone or calculate testosterone index by measuring SHBG, total testosterone. And there is a very simple formula where you divide SHBG by testosterone, multiply by 100, you have free testosterone index. So these are some of the practical tips how to manage. How to manage? Rule out classical hypogonadism. And if you are suspecting late onset hypogonadism, preference should be given to lifestyle modification, change in body weight, control of comorbid conditions like diabetes, hypothyroidism, look for drugs which are responsible for causing secondary or hypogonadism or change in libido and other issues. We, we never ask a thorough proper history, patient might be taking lots of unnecessary medications. When to replace? These are standard recommendations. Some that if you see a testosterone level which is more than 350 nanogram per deciliter, any degree of hypogonadism is ruled out. 
if you see a testosterone level which is less than 200 nanogram per deciliter, it needs investigation as well as treatment. Between 200 to 350 is a gray zone. We have to do exercise and actually ideally I always say please refer these patients to your senior colleagues, those who are experienced in treating such type of patients. These are endocrine society guidelines who should be given testosterone. All elderly male with low testosterone should not be given testosterone therapy. There is a clear no. There is a risk in elderly individual for giving testosterone therapy when we give it to everyone. It increases your cardiovascular mortality. We will come to that issue. In patients who have sexual dysfunction in form of erectile dysfunction or others, when it is substantiated by low testosterone, it makes a case giving testosterone for some time. Patients who are suffering from HIV infection, they, when they have a severe weight loss, this is an approved indication for testosterone therapy. And those male individuals who are on chronic glucocorticoid therapy, here again, it makes a case for using a low dose of testosterone when you have low testosterone level. Now coming for elderly individual, do we have evidence for benefit? If we are, if, if we are going to supplement it for all, if you see RCTs, I am not discussing individual RCTs. When you give testosterone to such individual, it modestly improves body composition, decreases your body fat, increases your lean mass, improves in bone density, improves in muscle strength. Effect on sexual function, mood, physical performance is modest and inconsistent between studies. And there is no data regarding benefit on fall and fracture. Now, because of lack of definitive studies, effect of testosterone replacement on prostate and cardiovascular events remains uncertain. And current US FDA meta-analysis clearly shows that in judicious use of testosterone, we will show you the meta-analysis, actually increases cardiovascular mortality. So, if you have a clear indication, friends, only then you should treat with testosterone therapy. There are number of preparations of testosterone which are now currently available, right from injectable to gel to patches, depending on the case-to-case -case basis and preference, we can use them. But let's come back to the case. So, so this is a, just giving you a background, theoretical background, what actually we should know. Now, I have now highlighted in the case, in red, the important points which I have told, always take history, physical examination, collate them together and then come to a decision. So this is a 64 year poor libido. I have, I have just now done in a orange color. So I will not repeat the case. So these are the three questions which I have asked from you. Now in this patient, ideally testosterone is repeated. And when it is found low, because he is elderly, he is suffering from diabetes, he is having obesity, so it is going to alter SHBG level. So a low total testosterone makes a case that we should order SHBG in this case or measure free testosterone. Only if free testosterone is low, which is found to be low in this case, we can think of giving testosterone therapy or not. So I will now again ask a question whether you are, his free testosterone is also low. So whether you are going to give testosterone therapy or not. So we will come to know. Let's see European male aging study. This is a very popular study. This study studied the prevalence of low testosterone in normal weight, overweight and obese men. And as you see, as BMI increases from less than 25 to more than 30, prevalence of low testosterone increases significantly. Not only total, if we see total and free T, it again decreases with increasing BMI. And now we have evidence that for every 5 kg per square meter body surface area increase in BMI, it is associated with decline in total testosterone, which is comparable to 10 years of aging. So if you are simply seeing an obese individual with low testosterone, his low testosterone is equivalent to this formula. And why testosterone decreases with aging? It is complex multifactorial. We will not go into the detail because of time. 
But what is important is obese individual have insulin resistance, obesity, all of them are going to decrease SHB level. There is change in gonadotropin levels at the level of center. There is change in negative feedback and there is rise actually in obese individual. There is rise in estradiol levels, although it remains within normal range. So do we have effect of weight loss? Again, the answer is yes. This is one study where the effect of weight loss on testosterone is studied following both gastric bypass surgery, that is bariatric surgery and hypocaloric diet. Now, as you see, when patient individual loses weight, there is a significant increase in total testosterone level. So even without giving testosterone, if you are seeing an obese individual and as we are all promoting kindly lose weight, we have to stress our, our effect on that and if that gentleman is losing BMI by 5 kgs, there will be a significant improvement in testosterone therapy. So in this case, what we have done, we have just instituted a weight loss therapy over next 10 months. We should not expect changes to happen overnight. He has lost around 6 kgs of body weight. Now with loss of this body weight, his total testosterone and free testosterone are repeated. Now they are found to be within normal range. And patient is also feeling better, which loss of body weight, obviously HbA1c is also going to be improved, even SUs are stopped. So see, it varies from person to person. This case which has come to us, we have not treated with testosterone. It Somebody might give testosterone therapy based on simple report of testosterone or free testosterone. So we have to make judgments on case to case basis. So the conclusion from this case, learning from this case is obesity has a strong negative influence on serum testosterone level. In most obese individuals, there is no identifiable hypothalmopituitary testicular disease. Simple treatment of obesity, reduction of body weight will result in improvement of testosterone and decision to start testosterone in such cases varies from case to case. So we cannot make generalization. Moving to the next case hurriedly, I have left with one minute. Again, I have highlighted important things again in red in this case. Type 2 diabetic underwent transplant on immunotherapy, obese and as you see clearly there are low testosterone levels with failure to lies. Why I have said always measure LH and FSH. Whenever testosterone level is low and if your hypothalmopituitary testicular axis is normal, LH FSH should rise. They are not rising in this case. So repeated found to have classical hypogonadism. This gentleman should actually be treated with testosterone therapy. Now there is a study testosterone replacement in hypogonadal type 2 diabetes or metabolic syndrome. It is known as times 2 study. Now this study has clearly shown that if an hypogonadal man you give testosterone therapy, it will result in improvement of insulin resistance, it will result in improvement of metabolic control, change in favorable body composition. So there are patients when there is a classical hypogonadism, we should give testosterone therapy. Coming to US FDA, FDA mandate, just last few slides, this is meta-analysis of US FDA meta-analysis of 27 randomized controlled trial and if you see the odds ratio, odds ratio is 1.54 which means with injudicious use of testosterone therapy in all type 2 diabetic individual, we are actually increasing cardiovascular risk. Therefore, currently it is not recommended to do injudicious use of testosterone in all type 2 diabetic individual with the low level of T. These are some of the barriers to optimal practice which actually I have covered during my lecture why there is so much of confusion. So probably this lecture might help you to conclude with T replacement for classical hypogonadism. No confusion. We have to treat. It is going to be beneficial. Due to limited evidence, T replacement of all elderly type 2 diabetic men with late onset hypogonadism is experimental. I have shown you the evidences and I have shown you how to do them in routine clinical practice. Thank you very much. Fresh thinking rather than predetermined or predictable thinking is required because practicing medicine is an art of interpretation of science and its application to human health, behavior and disease. 
so we have to do in conjunction not to treat individual investigations thank you very much